You're listening to the BBM Global Network with 25 years in broadcast audio and video production. Our passionate team creates content and marketing for the world of Internet talk radio. If you've got a passion, come join us at bbmglobalnetwork.com. The BBM Global Network. Your voice is now heard. is Get Off the Hot Mess Express with your host, Karen McGuire. Karen is here to support you in finding more joy and love in your life's relationships through self-acceptance, vulnerability, and courage. So now, please welcome your host of Get Off the Hot Mess Express, Karen McGuire. Hello, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Get Off the Hot Mess Express. I'm your host, Karen McGuire, and we're coming to you live on the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. Thank you so much for tuning in tonight. I'm incredibly grateful and appreciative of each and every one of you who listen to my show each week. And I'm so excited about tonight's show because I have a truly remarkable individual here with me. My guest tonight is neuroperformanceologist and certified hypnotherapist, Scott Schmarin. Scott is also a nationally known speaker, coach, and TV and radio personality. He's a regular guest on the Howard Stern Radio Show, and he's appeared on Fox News and Coast to Coast Radio. Scott also co-authored Stepping Stones to Success with Jack Canfield, Deepak Chopra, and Dennis Waitley. Scott has spent over 20 years learning and developing powerful techniques and skills that can help you tap into the infinite power of your subconscious mind. He's used what he's learned to transform his own life, losing an astounding 180 pounds and maintaining it while recovering and rediscovering his vitality. In fact, after he conquered his weight struggles, Scott ran the Chicago Marathon and appeared on the Oprah Winfrey Show, where Oprah said, if Scott can do it, I can do it, and so can you. How amazing is that? So it goes without saying that Scott doesn't just talk the talk, he walks the talk. But tonight's show isn't about physical transformation. It's about what you do with your mind that in turn transforms every aspect of your life your body, your relationships, your career, your income, and your emotional and spiritual growth and vitality. Scott has developed his own technique called mind performance training that allows people to make rapid and permanent changes to their lives so they can overcome obstacles and accomplish all of their goals, dreams, and visions. His coaching program has transformed the lives of people just like you and me, helping them discover how amazing they are and live the life of their dreams. Scott's techniques are used by CEOs, salespeople, business executives, and Olympic and professional athletes to improve leadership skills, increase sales and profits, release weight, and achieve consistent peak athletic performance. We are so lucky to have Scott on the show tonight. And with that, I'd like to welcome Scott to the show Hey, Scott, welcome to Get Off the Hot Mess Express. Hey, Karen, thanks for having me. I'm, I'm really grateful for being here. Thank you so much. How are you tonight? I am great. How about yourself? I'm doing fantastic. Thank you so much. So Good. I, I want to dive right in and I want to ask you, first of all, can you tell us what is neuroperformanceology? Neuroperformanceology is the moniker that I use to describe what I do, which is, you know, I've spent so many years studying different modalities of how the subconscious mind works and how to affect change and working on molding and crafting and shaping those things 
to be able to use them and how I use them today to help my clients. And that's where neuroperformanceology came from. I've never heard the term before. Is that a term that you coined yourself? It is my term, yes. It is how I, it's the moniker I came off that determines what I do and how I do it. Yes, I created that. I love it. I love it. Now, when you were growing up, did you have a clue that neuroperformanceology was what you were going to do? Well, did I have a clue that I'd be doing that? No. I always had a little voice in my head that really told me I needed to help people and that I really needed to make a difference in this world. And I really wasn't sure how I was going to do that. But it's really the voice that shaped the path and the direction of my life and my journey. What's your core mission as a neuroperformanceologist? Well, my, my core mission has always been is that I want to help people be able to reach deep, really deep inside themselves and really discover how amazing they are and they really already are and that they possess everything they need to create and live the life of their dreams. And that's my mission. I think that's amazing. So the idea is really helping people discover or rediscover their strengths and their passions and that they have everything they need within themselves. And it's just kind of tuning back into that and shutting out all the noise and kind of the, the other junk that gets stuck in our heads as we go through life. Right. Exactly. I mean, you know, my belief is that you already possess everything you need to accomplish anything you want in your life. And for some people, at some point in their life, they knew they had that. And some people have never even realized that they have that ability and potential inside of them. And it's my job to help them facilitate that, help them pull it out of themselves and go, wow, look at me. I can do this. And then you just see them light up and then everything mm. becomes easy after that. Mm -hmm. That's incredible. Now, Speaking of incredible, you made an incredible transformation when you released, I think it's even more than 180 pounds and you regained your vitality. Can you share the story of how that transformation came about for you and, and whether it was just that well, you woke up one day and made these changes or it was kind of a gradual process? Well, it wasn't a gradual process. I spent most of my life being morbidly obese. I mean, I was the fat kid, I was teased, and I was bullied, I was called names, I was made fun of, and not just by kids, by adults too, and so I, I went through most of my life being the fat guy, being the fat kid, being the fat adult, being, when I, and I, when I say I was fat, I'm a giant, I'm five foot six, and at my <laughs> peak, I weighed 360 pounds, I had a 56 inch waist, I was almost as big around as I was tall. Mm. And I don't know how many times in my life I had lost a weight, 50, 100, 150 pounds, and then always put it back on. And each time it took a piece of me. Mm -hmm. And I began to lose who I was. I began to lose that little voice in my head telling me to help people and make a difference in this world. And I reached a low point in my life where I felt I had no worth, felt no value, I really lost my desire to live and I made a decision, a poor decision, but it's a decision that changed my life is I decided I didn't want to live anymore. And I remember taking an entire bottle of sleeping pills and painkillers and I remember pouring them into a paper cup and then walking into my bathroom, putting it on the bathroom counter and I looked in the mirror and I didn't see anything anymore. It was gone. Oh, geez. And wow. I, took the pills and I just sat down. I had this chair where I would hide from the world and I just waited to die. And at some point I passed out and I can't tell you when. And truthfully, I should have died. It probably took enough medication to kill an elephant. But I didn't. In fact, I woke up in that chair and I remember seeing the light shining down through the window in my living room. And I, it was so surreal. I almost thought that I was dead. It was that peaceful. And in that moment, I got clarity, and I took responsibility for my life. And I remember getting out of that chair, tears running down my cheeks, saying, 
I'm responsible. It's time for me to take action. So I began to explore on this journey how my mind worked and why I wanted to change, but I couldn't make change. And how do I facilitate change? And I began to study and learn. And that's how I learned hypnosis and neuro-linguistic programming and pick a type of meditation, pick almost any modality. And I started studying it. And I started wow. to change. I started to change how I perceived myself. And I started moving down the path that I'm on now. And then that voice came back. And then I committed myself to helping other people do the same. That story just left me with chills. And I can't wait to dig more into that and what you do for other people. We'll do that right after we take a short break, folks. You're listening to Get Off the Hot Mess Express. And I'm your host, Karen McGuire. We're coming to you live on the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. French Rastafarian baker Chef Hugues Mott is a fourth-generation baker and has worked in 11 countries across three continents. Born in Mulhouse, France, he began apprenticing in his father's bakery at age 12 and has devoted his life to learning cultures of the world from inside kitchens across the globe. He also teaches traditional French baking by hosting demonstrations and classes, and his passion for baking is reflected in his delicious confections. With a deep respect for discipline and his Rastafarian way of life, Chef Uvmat exemplifies commitment to tradition and culture in a global world. Traveling extensively and combining a myriad of flavors into his recipes, Chef Uvmat brings a unique approach to baking. To read more about the French Rastafarian baker, visit www.frenchchefugues.com. That's H-U-G-U-E-S. Bon appétit and bless up. Welcome back, everyone. I'm Karen McGuire, and you're listening to Get Off the Hot Mess Express. We're coming to you live on the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. And my guest tonight is the incredible Scott Schmarin. Scott, welcome back to the show. Thank you. So before the break, you told us the incredible goosebump-inducing story about the very low low that you came to before your life completely changed and you and you never went back and I I just want to thank you for being so open and vulnerable and sharing that story with our listeners Um, I've struggled with weight most of my life as well and I, I guess what I'd like to know is how you went about changing your thinking? Um, was it more about telling yourself not to eat certain things or was it more about changing how you saw yourself and, and no, no longer really liking or accepting yourself as this, what you called, you know, was as a morbidly obese person? Um, a couple of things. Well, first of all, I think that we have weight loss wrong in in the world today. We focus on diet and exercise as the keys. And don't get me wrong, they are really important tools, not keys. Mm -hmm. Because if they were the keys, you would eat less, you'd move your body a little bit more, and you'd lose weight, and it would never be a problem again, right? Mm -hmm. But it's not. And the key is how we perceive ourselves in our mind. Your subconscious mind controls everything. And if you've been a certain way for a long time, it becomes your norm. And your subconscious mind does not distinguish between what's good and bad, right or wrong. So if you give it an image and you've been a certain way, like being overweight for a long period of time, it becomes who you are. And in the moment you try to lose weight, at some point, whether it's right away or farther down the road, you either lose a lot of weight, put it back on, or you just can't get yourself started. So the key, the beginning of everything starts in your mind and changing the picture and your perceptions. Because one of the really incredible things about your subconscious mind is it doesn't distinguish time, and it doesn't mm-hmm. distinguish what's real and not real. So if I put an image in my head of how I want to be physically, what I look like mentally, spiritually, emotionally, how, what type of relationships I have, how I want to live my life, even where I want to live, and I make it real, and my subconscious mind accepts that, now it begins to drive towards that. It begins to become aware of things that can help me. And then the old things that prevent me from getting there begin to fall away because they have to to make it happen. So your, mm. your subconscious mind is a goal-achieving organism. It's always been designed that way. The difference is if you take control of it, you can begin to plot and chart the course of your life. 
Wow. So is, is mind performance training, you know, the training that you developed, is that really about learning how to take control of your subconscious mind? Yes. I mean, it's a process. So that process is in mind performance training, as I call them the four R's. There are four distinct areas you have to work on. The first R is you have to learn to relax. Because in a relaxed state, you have access to your subconscious mind. You have access to your creativity, your imagination, all the things that are great about you. Like a, an athlete performing in the zone state is in a fully relaxed, awake, hypnotic state. They'll tell you that everything seems to be moving a little bit slower than them. They seem to be able to control time, and they seem to be able to be in a state of flow where they can work and perform easily and effortlessly. And then once you can access that state, then you can go on to the next bar, which is to release. You know how to let go of all the old junk, garbage, and crap from your past. Old things from the environment you grew up in. Maybe traumatic things happened to you, like abuse or something else. Or just simply the values that, that were instilled in you as a child. I'm not saying they're bad, but those things act as filters. And those filters mm -hmm. prevent you from changing. So we got to work on cleaning out those filters. And then once we do that, now we have a clean slate. And we go into the third hour, which is to reprogram your mind. And like I said, mm -hmm. your subconscious mind doesn't distinguish between past, present, and future. It doesn't distinguish between what's real and not real. So we created this empowering vision of how you want your life to be in every aspect of your life. Installed in your subconscious mind starts to drive towards it. And then the last hour is to reinforce you got to reinforce those changes so you don't go back to where you were before. So it's really a very simple process. Simple, but obviously so incredibly powerful and life-changing. Yeah. You know, it, it's funny how sometimes the simplest things are the most powerful things in life. Mm -hmm. And I always mm -hmm. use the term simple and easy when I'm working with my clients. Mm -hmm. And I tell them the things I give them to do are very simple but sometimes they're not always easy. True. I mean, I think most people would agree that change isn't easy, right? I mean, staying within our comfort zones is so much easier and safer, but the true magic in our life happens outside of our comfort zones, but that, you know, people are resistant to that because they, they like what they're used to. They like familiarity. Do you find that with a lot of your clients, we, that they're re resistant to change? We are creatures of familiarity. Our brains are wired that way. Our brains are wired to be in routine. And the issue for most people is not that they can't follow a routine, is that the routine they're following doesn't serve them. Um, most people go through life. They get up in the morning. They have their same cup of coffee. They put on their clothes. They drive to work the same way at the same time every day. They do the same things. They come home. They have dinner. They watch TV for three hours. They go to bed. Okay. We are creatures of familiar and routine. So you've got to change those routines. And sometimes when we start to change those routines, we get kicked back from our mind saying, whoa, 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 wait a minute. That's not who we are. Mm -hmm. So it takes time. I always tell people, you've got to have patience persistence and faith on this process. Most important things you have. Patience is knowing that however long your journey is going to take, how long it's going to take. And patience is what allows you to continue on the journey and see it to completion. Persistence, mm -hmm. there are going to be obstacles and challenges in that road. And most people, when they reach an obstacle or challenge, their mind finds it as an excuse to, uh, to convince you to go back to where you were before. It makes the obstacle look a hundred times worse than it really is. And we turn tail and run. Persistence is knowing mm -hmm. that that obstacle or challenge is there for a reason. There's something you need to learn, and what you learn from that lesson will push you on in your journey. And then faith? Faith. Going from point A to point B, when I decided I wanted to maintain a weight of 175 pounds for the rest of my life, I had no idea how to do that. I've never done that in my life. So mm -hmm. I needed to learn along that journey, and faith, faith allowed me to have that belief that I would learn what I need to learn on that journey I was going on in my life. So patience, persistence, and faith are your three best friends you have on this journey of change or whatever it is. So, so is that kind of how you help push your clients past the resistance they initially feel when they're doing something different, when they're changing their routine or changing what you said, like what they're changing, what they do every day. And they're getting that kickback from their brain. You remind them about those three 
factors. Yes, and I also, most people don't know when they're resisting and kicking back, but Mm -hmm. it's easy for me to see it. They don't see it. So just simply letting them know is a tool in itself. Got it. Great. Well, it's time for us to take another short break, folks. You're listening to Get Off the Hot Mess Express, and I'm your host, Karen McGuire. We're coming to you live on the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. We're just getting started with Scott, so don't go anywhere, friends. We'll be right back. Horses, mystical, present, past, and future, all in one. Wild, free, domestic, and healing for everyone. Betty Hames knows this and has put her horses to good use with Nature Connect Equine Coaching. Her mission is to help people affected by the loss of hope and trust in their lives and to rediscover the wonders of nature through nature-connected learning so they can rebuild their lives and live peacefully with newfound hope, trust, and joy. Betty Hames is also a certified elite life coach, a Washington State certified counselor, and chemical dependency professional. She is passionate about partnering nature with healing, and through horses, she sees amazing results and transformation in lives that might have otherwise been lost. Call 509-830-9225 and visit her at HamesLifeCoaching.com. Hold your horses. You're in for the ride of your life. Do you ever wonder why certain things are happening in your life? How to start a business or a new direction? Need answers? Astrologer Bonnie Perbula can help you reveal your true self and gain strength and focus so you can achieve greater joy and success. Working with a natal birth date, time, and location, Bonnie brings out qualities to aid you in getting the best from your life. She can help you unlock dormant traits to bring you greater awareness. Bonnie also conducts public speaking engagements to educate aspiring astrologers on their journey to the stars. A gifted artist, Bonnie bridges her talents and recently launched a line of Astro Bears, uniquely created in colors of individuals' astrology charts. She also makes one-of-a-kind necklaces of crystal beads and woven thread. To learn more about the world of Bonnie Prabula, go to BonnieGPrabula.com. And for astrology consulting, visit AstrologyConsultants.com or call or email her at 808-526-1536 or BonnieGP at AOL.com. Welcome back, everybody. I'm Karen McGuire, and you're listening to Get Off the Hot Mess Express. We're coming to you live on the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. And once again, my guest tonight is Scott Schmarin. Scott, welcome back to the show. Thank you. So before the break, we were talking about um, change and transformation and, and resistance to change and how a lot of times people may not even realize that they are getting that kickback from their brain, but that's something obviously you're trained to spot. Um, And thinking about that, I wanted to ask, do you think your clients who struggle to make positive changes in their lives have a fear of failure or a fear of success? I think it's the fear of the unknown. You know, Mm -hmm. when I work with people to make change, like I said, we're creatures of familiarity. And look in the most extreme case, somebody who's a a severe drug addict. They know consciously that their behavior is destroying them, maybe even killing them. Yet, in their subconscious mind, that fear of the unknown, of living a sober life, is so scary that they're willing to continue with their habit that can can kill them. You know, they used to say Mm -hmm. that man's greatest need was survival, and that's wrong. Uh, the great psychiatrist Virginia Satir said that man's greatest need is familiarity because we will choose a habit we are familiar with that will kill us over making change that could save us. Wow. So it's that need for, for a sense of certainty, right? I mean, even if something is bad for us, mm-hmm. at least we know what that looks like. Mm-hmm. I mean, think about it. When we were cave people, we needed to live that way. We needed Mm -hmm. to have routines. We needed to know, you know, that if you saw a lion, your instant instinct was to run and get out of there. You weren't looking at the lion saying, "Eh, is it a good lion? Is it a bad lion? Will it eat me? Maybe it's nice and friendly. It was instinctual. You had to have an instant response in your mind and and have a reaction and and get out of there. And Mm -hmm. so we became familiar features of familiarity and change. It's how we're brains away was we needed to survive. And to a certain extent, we need that for survival now, but sometimes our habits that we develop don't serve us and they become detrimental. Right. Right. 
So what are the necessary elements or goals that we need to embrace in order to achieve permanent and lasting change? Mm, that's a big question. The <laughs> elements. You know what? The most important elements are patience, persistence, and faith because we have anything but that in the world we live in. And mm -hmm. in my clients that I work with and people that I meet when I speak, I find that the biggest reason that most people fail at accomplishing their goals is not because they're not capable. It's because they have an expectation that it's supposed to happen very quickly or they have an expectation of time or what's supposed to happen in a certain amount of time and it doesn't happen. And then they just say, well, I guess it's not going to work or this doesn't work and they chuck it and they forget it. And so you got to be willing to stay the course. You know, it took me 40 years of the first 40 years of my life to get to the point where I was ready to make permanent and lasting change. Does that mm -hmm. mean it has to be that way for everybody? No, but all the things that happened to me along that journey of the first 40 years of my life for me were necessary for me to move on to the next phase of my life. And mm -hmm. I think people, we live in an instant gratification society. You know, if it doesn't happen in, in 30 seconds, then it can't work. And it just doesn't work that way. Our minds are still not wired to change that quickly and that rapidly. Sometimes we can, but most of the time it takes time and it takes repetition. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think part of it too is a lot of us have these, these, these beliefs, these limiting beliefs that don't serve us, but they've been ingrained in us for most of us since we were kids you know, about who we are oh, yeah. and how, what we're worth and what we can achieve. And so is, is that part of the process too, is learning how to let go of those and create more self-empowering beliefs? Yes. Well, I mean, like I said, you know, we are creatures of the environment we grew up in. So let me mm -hmm. give you an example. I work with a lot of salespeople and they usually come to me for one or two reasons is they get to a certain income level and they can't get above it, or they have huge rocket like explosions in their business where they make tremendous amounts of money and then they crash and burn, they bust out and they start the whole process over. And what happens is when we really start to dig into it, they have very limiting values and beliefs about money. For example, they grew up in a household and they heard things like, well, you know, money's the root of all evil. Only dishonest people make a lot of money. You got to be bad to make a lot of money. You got to cheat people. Mm. So you hear that as a child, so now you're working, you're having some success and whatever that means to you. And at some point you cross that line and there's a little voice in the back of your head saying, what are you doing? You know what? Mm. You're a good person and good people just don't make money like this. And then what happens is it doesn't really speak to you that way. You begin to sabotage. So right. it's like a thermostat. The temperature gets too high, air conditioning kicks on and kicks you down. So what happens Little voice here says, you know, you've been working really hard. You should take some time off. Don't work so hard. And you start to work a little <laughs> bit less. You start to get a little bit lazier. Or your mind convinces yourself to reward yourself. And you buy something that you can't even afford out of your price range, creates stress and anxiety, and then you start to spiral down. So mm -hmm. that's just an example of how things that we hear in our environment, can, especially as children, over and over again make a lasting and sometimes permanent impression on us that affect us in our lifestyle and how we live our lives as adults. So how do you help people release those limiting values or beliefs and replace them with more empowering ones, more positive ones? I know it's not really that difficult to get people to release them. And the process I take them through in the hypnotic state is not meant for them to revisit old painful things. What it does, it simply allows them to acknowledge them and to let them go in a very, very pleasant, wonderful, loving atmosphere and just let them go. Don't need hmm. a reason to. It's time to put old things away and you just let them go. But we do that. in. The, it's got to be in the subconscious mind. You know, we think that almost everything we do, we do at a conscious level. But neuroscientists have taught us now that only about 10 or 15% of what we do, we do at a conscious level. So that means all the permanent values, beliefs, and habits we have are not conscious. They're subconscious. So we got to address them and get rid of them at a subconscious level. Wow, that's incredible. 
It's time for us to take another break, folks. You're listening to Get Off the Hot Mess Express, and I'm your host, Karen McGuire. We're coming to you live on the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. We have a lot more to go over with Scott, so don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. There are artists, and then there's Alice Asmar. This award-winning artist has spent her entire life devoted to her artistic pursuits and has had a lifelong fascination with American Indians of the southwestern United States. Her book, Dance to the Great Spirit, showcases her drawings and paintings inspired by sacred rituals of the Pueblo Indians, and four of her lithographs are in permanent collection at the National Museum of American History and the Smithsonian Institution in Washington, D.C. She is one of four artists in the United States to win a Woolley Fellowship for study in Paris at Les Colday Beaux-Arts and has been featured in numerous publications. She's exhibited at the world's most prestigious museums and galleries and recently won a 20-year service award from the Burbank City Council and the inaugural art competition of the Foundation of the United States in Paris. Visit www.asmarart.com, www.aliceasmarinternational.com and email alice at aliceasmar at aol.com. Attorney Renee Marie Smith is changing the way we sell real estate. She wrote a series of books called My Short Sale Guru Guides for all real estate practitioners. Whether you're a homeowner wanting to understand the process, an agent who has been handling short sales for years, or an industry analyst wanting to know how short sales impact your business, Renee uses her vast real estate experience to take a comprehensive look at the recent market phenomena while relaying it in an easy-to-understand format. Through her company, Smith Title Services, Renee has counseled thousands of short sale participants and processed in excess of a thousand short sales. Her knowledge is transformational for real estate professionals and laymen alike and her live presentations provide people the opportunity to ask specific questions about their issues. Buy her books and schedule her to speak at your next event. Visit www.smithtitleservices.com or call 305-705-3428 or email her at renee at smithtitleservices.com Isn't it time to sell your property today? Learn the My Short Sale Guru way. Welcome back, everybody. You're listening to Get Off the Hot Mess Express, and I'm your host, Karen McGuire. We're coming to you live on the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. My guest tonight is Scott Schmarin, neuroperformanceologist and certified hypnotherapist. Scott, welcome back to the show. Thank you. I'm I'm glad to be here. So before the break, we were talking about the process that you go through with your clients to help them release um, old limiting beliefs by really tapping into the subconscious mind. And you you were saying that you do that mostly through hypnosis. Is that right? Well, we access the hypnotic state. You know, the hypnotic state is not this magical, mystical thing. People think they have these mystical this, these misconceived ideas of what it is, and they think it's a zombie-like state where mm-hmm. somebody's manipulating them and tricking them and making them cluck like chickens or bark like <laughs> dogs. That's not that right. at all. <laughs> it's accessing this powerful state of mind, and it's really very easy to access. In fact, it's a natural state of mind. You're in and out of a hypnotic state all day long. Let me give you an example. How many of you who are listening to the show drive to and from work or some other place you go to all the time, and most of the time, you get to your destination, you have no recollection whatsoever of driving there. Now, you're not there, you didn't kill anybody, you stopped at every traffic light, but you really were someplace else. Mm -hmm. How did you do that? That's a hypnotic state. Or how about getting lost? You're in a movie theater, and you're lost in this amazing movie for three hours, and you're not thinking about anything. It's like you're almost in the picture. And then the movie's over, three hours went by, and it seemed like five minutes. That's a hypnotic state. So we access the hypnotic state all day long. It's easy to access. What you do with it when you access it and how you take control of it is what's important. Wow. Now you mentioned the importance of having a very clear vision of how your life will be once you make whatever change you want to make or overcome whatever obstacle you're facing. Can you tell us a little bit more about that vision and why that's so important? Sure. So I run my clients through an exercise, and this is part of their homework when we, we're getting ready to the process of creating their vision and reprogramming their mind. And so the premise of the exercise is I tell them that I'm their fairy godmother. And if they would like to imagine me wearing the beautiful Glenda dress and having the blonde wig, 
Hey, whatever, <laughs> whatever floats your boat. And, but the premise is that I'm your fairy godmother. I've waved my magic wand, and all the limitations of your life have been taken off of you. Not only have all those limitations been removed from your life, you are already living the life of your dreams. You've accomplished all your major goals. So bearing that in mind, what would your life look like? And then I have them break it down into physically describing how they would dress, what they would wear, emotionally, mentally, spiritually, what their relationships would be like, every aspect of their life. And then I have them write up a scenario that represents all that success. And then we take that scenario and then we install it in their subconscious mind while they are in the hypnotic state. It's really, really very powerful. Like for me, I started out with the statement that I am a strong, healthy, lean, powerful, attractive, youthful body weighing 175 pounds or less that I maintain easily for the rest of my life. And then I expanded it out. What would I look like? How would I be dressed? How would I carry myself? What would I think? How would I feel? What would my beliefs be? What would I be doing for a living? What are my relationships like? And I create this model, this picture of how I am as if it's already happened and then put it into my mind. And then you start to move towards that. Your mind drives towards it. It's like the ship begins to change direction and you begin to slowly but surely go in a, in a different path, down a different path and a different life. Now I've, I've read, and I think I've heard you say this too, that when you write it out in your own handwriting, if you write out, you know, your goals or what you're grateful for, that they're, you're accessing a different part of your brain when you're doing that, as opposed to just saying something out loud or even typing it, what does that do in terms of tapping into our subconscious mind when we're writing something out? Ah, thank you for bringing that up. Writing things out in your own hand is so magically powerful. What neuroscientists have taught us now is when we write things out in our own handwriting, we believe it to be true. Wow. Even if it's not. And, you know, we think of it as such a simple thing, writing things out in our own handwriting, but you're really engaging three of the major modalities, which are sight, feel, and hearing. Mm -hmm. Let me explain. So here you are, you're writing out how you want your life to be. You can feel the pen in your hand. You can feel it writing on the paper. You see the letters you're writing out. And also, when we're writing things out in our own handwriting, we're reading it back to ourselves in our own voice, in our head. We hear the words we're writing, and that's powerful. It makes a lasting impression on your subconscious mind. Now, here's what concerns me, is if you talk to people that their kids are in grade school right now, our kids are not learning how to write out things in longhand. They're not learning cursive writing anymore. Really? Everything is typed on an iPad. Yes, oh. or they're texting. So mm. there is great power and great magic in writing things out in your own handwriting. So when you're working with a client to create their vision and getting that specificity and talking about all the different elements that you touched on, you know, physicality, emotional state, mental state, relationships, all of that, is writing out that vision something that you have them do as either as part of their homework or as something that they do, I don't know, daily, weekly? They do it as part of their homework. It's an exercise. Mm. And then after they do it and we install it in their subconscious mind, I have them rewrite it at least once a week. And when they're writing it out, I have them take the premise that they're writing a great novel. Think about when you read a great novel. You're just reading words, but yet you're engaged emotionally into the story. You can feel things. You can see things. You can hear things. Maybe even smell and taste things just from the words that are on that paper. So I have them make it rich in detail. You know, the, the guiding rule should be that when you read it, you should get really excited. And mm -hmm. if you're not getting excited, then you need to add more to it. Add some spice to it. Make it tasty. Make it exciting. I love that. I love that. And then is it something that they should be reading daily or, you know, first thing in the morning before they go to bed? How do you usually, what do you usually tell well, your clients you to do with gone, that? If you haven't gone, for my clients, this is going to become a hypnotic recording for them. So they're going to listen to it and they're mm -hmm. going to engage their subconscious mind. Like they're watching the most incredible three-dimensional movie they've ever seen where they're actually in the movie. That's powerful. Now, if you don't have that opportunity, 
um, I would probably actually what would be a really great thing for your listeners to do is to write out and make this great story of their life as if it's already happened. And every night before they go to bed, review that story. And as they're going to sleep, think about that story and allow themselves to go to sleep with that story. It's great power in that because your subconscious mind is up 24 Mm seven. So that being said, if you're up 20, if their subconscious mind is functioning 24 seven, instead of letting it wander off aimlessly doing whatever it wants to do while you're sleeping, give it a story to work with. Let it begin to work with it and play with it. Well, you just heard it from Scott, folks. There's your homework assignment. We've got to take another short break. You're listening to Get Off the Hot Vest Express, and I'm your host, Karen McGuire. We're coming to you live on the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. We will be right back. Are you looking for employment and live in Los Angeles, Orange, Riverside, and San Bernardino counties? Jobs Annex is the place for you. Are you an employer looking to fill a position or quite a few positions in Los Angeles, Orange, Riverside, and San Bernardino counties? Jobs Annex is for you. Employers, JobsAnnex.com is your resource for career-minded people. JobsAnnex.com is the convenient place for job seekers and employers to hook up and move forward. Jobs Annex has been serving Los Angeles, Orange, Riverside, and San Bernardino counties for over 14 years. Years. Jobs Annex is a former employment search firm. We've evaluated many thousands of resumes and we understand what employers want and what job applicants need to be successful in their interviews. At Jobs Annex, we provide you with the tools to tell your story for free. Our resources at JobsAnnex.com will help each applicant construct an award-winning resume, an eye-catching cover letter, and key interview questions to ask in various types of interviews. Best of all, it's free. JobsAnnex.com. That's J-O-B-S-A-N-N-E-X.com. Welcome back, everybody. I'm Karen McGuire, and you're listening to Get Off the Hot Mess Express. We're coming to you live on the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. Once again, I'd like to welcome Scott Schmarin back to the show. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. And folks, before the break, Scott gave you a wonderful homework assignment. I hope you're going to do it. I know I'm going to do it. It's really cool. I'm actually really pumped about it. (laughs) I'm really pumped about it. So thank you. So Scott, would you mind sharing with our listeners one or two really powerful stories of clients of yours who found success through your mind performance training? Oh, this is one of my favorite things to do. So this is one of my favorite stories and she's one of my favorite clients. And one of the reasons I love her so much is I'm five foot six and I'm almost a head taller than she is. So I'm a giant compared to her. (laughs) Um, So this wonderful woman comes to me and she has a really big goal. She wants to become an IFBB pro bodybuilding champion. And she's always competed at an amateur level and she did, did pretty well, but she's never been able to attain that status of being a pro. And she also trains other fitness competitors and she also had a goal she wanted to open a gym and have it be for competitors. And what I noticed is she didn't really have a clear picture of what that looked like. So I actually took, we, we went through this exercise and she saw herself on the stage and she could feel the heat of the lights and the roar of the crowd. And then fast forward in time, her gym would open up and it would be one of the greatest cutting edge gyms for fitness competitors. So what happened? We went through this process. I worked with her. Her training didn't change, but her mental training changed in how we worked. So she entered uh, four years ago. She went to to Pittsburgh, entered an IFBB Pro Bodybuilding Championship. She entered in three divisions. She won all three divisions, and she didn't win one professional title. She won two. Now, here's what's interesting. She was 56 years old when she won. (gasps) So she won her age division. She won the age division underneath her, and she won the age division underneath that one. In fact, in that last age division, the woman she beat was almost the same age as her daughter. Wow. Then, fast forward, six months later, her gym opened. Fast Mm. forward, a year later, her gym doubled in size. It's still there. So there's great magic and power in our subconscious minds. So you want another story? Yeah. Well, that was incredible, but yes, <laughs> another one would be great. Okay. Um, I had this gentleman come to me 
And he's really a cool guy. He served in the military. He was a battlefield medic in the first Gulf War in the early 90s. Um, wounded in action, recovered, and he became um, a computer geek. He designed websites, but he always loved being a paramedic, and he was a fireman. And he was in California as a volunteer fireman, and this is many years ago. And one day, he's fighting a fire three stories up on a ladder, and unbeknownst to him or anybody else fighting that fire, the pressure built up in the building, and the building exploded right where his ladder was, and he was blown three stories off of a ladder and landed on concrete and actually survived. He had a massive amount of damage to the nerves in his back and his legs. It took him a year to start walking again. And then his life became pain. So on a scale of 1 to 10, on a good day, which meant he wouldn't be on his feet for more than an hour, laying down or sitting in a, with a chair with a specially designed cushion, his pain level would be at a 4 or 5. If he spent any more than an hour on his feet, his pain would shoot to a 9 or 10 and stay that way for several days. He had multiple surgeries, nothing seemed to work, and he didn't want to take narcotics because he couldn't think. Mm -hmm. So he came to me as his last leg, and he basically said to me, if I can't manage my pain, I'm going to kill myself. And he has this wonderful wife, they had no children, and we always make a goal. And sometimes the simplest goal, sometimes things that we even take for granted are the most powerful. So here was his goal. He just wanted to be able to go to a restaurant, sit down in a booth or sit in a chair, sit across from his wife, have a glass of wine, have dinner, and have conversation with his wife. That's all mm -hmm. he wanted to do. Mm -hmm. I go, wow, that's so powerful, but it's something we take for granted. So I worked with him, and he was able to do it. Wow. And then, in fact, that night they went for dinner, they actually went to a movie afterwards. And then mm -hmm. he decided he wanted more. He wanted to update his skills, so he contacted one of the computer software companies that, were, that had offices locally, he explained the situation, and they invited him to a training. The training was five days a week for eight hours a day sitting in a, in a desk. And he did. Wow. And then he went on to advanced training, which meant for him in the city of Chicago, he had to take the train downtown. He had to walk three-quarters of a mile to where the facility was take the class all day, walk three quarters of a mile back to the train, take the train back home. And he did it. And he used to come in once in a while for tune-up after that. And it was one of the most powerful moments I've ever had. He was getting ready to walk out of my office. And he pulls this coin out of his pocket. And it's the St. Florian medallion. St. Florian is the patron saint of fireman. And mm -hmm. he says, you know, we earn these things for saving somebody's life. And I got this for saving somebody's life. And he handed me the coin and he thanked me for saving his life. Mm. And I carry that medallion with me everywhere I go. And it, it is one of the most powerful experiences that I ever had. So you have an unlimited amount of power inside of your mind. You just have to believe it, tap into it, and use it. Wow. I mean, I am... I'm blown away. Those store, both of those stories are incredible. And to know that you played such an integral part in changing their lives and in the second instance, mm -hmm. saving his life, that's, there probably aren't really any words to explain how that must make you feel. No, there aren't. Wow. Well, I mean, sitting where I am, I just want to acknowledge you. I can just feel the significance and just I'm filled with so much awe for what you do for people. So thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Wow. It's unbelievable. The other thing I wanted to ask you about, Scott, is the importance of having a daily routine as a student of human behavior. I'm sure that you've observed people have both successful and unsuccessful habits. What's the key in your opinion to developing successful habits? Well, we, and you just mentioned it before is having a daily routine. We are creatures of routine and whether you think you do or you don't, you have a routine. Some people say, oh, I don't have a routine. I just do everything as it comes along, blah, 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 blah. They don't. We have routines. So if we are creatures of a routine, why not make great routines? 
I'm going to tell you that I've been following my daily routine consistently for over 15 years. Wow. It's the quality and the consistency of your daily routine that allow you to access the best in you and achieve great things. Well, when we come back from this last break, I want to ask you about your routine and ask you more about how people can get started developing a healthy routine. I'm your host, Karen McGuire, and you're listening to Get Off the Hot Mess Express. We're coming to you live on the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. Don't go anywhere, folks. We'll be right back. Animal lover, author, artist, and public speaker, Patricia Daly Life is a Renaissance woman in her own right. A lover of animals from a young age, Patricia lives on a farm in Virginia and has rescued neglected thoroughbred horses, keeping them or finding them safe havens. She is also a published author, and her books document real-life experiences that she shares in her passionate stories, taking the reader around the world in a colorful kaleidoscope of life. An accomplished artist, Patricia Daly Life's oil paintings feature animals, portraits, stills, nature, and abstract, and she allows the brush to paint the image in an organic, natural way. A public speaker, Patricia is motivated to continually wonder about life and advocates for all of us to do the same and document our own unique history. To learn more about Patricia Daly Life, visit www.literarylady.com and www.patricialife.com or email her at pdlife at gmail.com. Welcome back, friends. I'm Karen McGuire, and you're listening to Get Off the Hot Mess Express. We're coming to you live on the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. And once again, Scott, welcome back to the show. Glad to be back. So before the break, we were talking about a daily routine, and you mentioned, I think, that you've been following yours for about 15 years. Can you tell our listeners what your daily routine is? Sure. Well, you know what? Better than me telling you what my routine is, because my routine shouldn't be your routine. What I want to do is I'll give them some of the things I think are important to constructing a daily routine. Okay. the, The greatest thing you can do is every morning when you wake up is to find gratitude is always coming from a place of gratitude no matter what is happening in your life so what i would recommend is every day find three things you're grateful for and try to make them different every day and what you're doing is you're after a couple days it's going to get hard for most people because you're not used to thinking that way and what it does is it forces you to find gratitude in things that normally you wouldn't find gratitude in so you want to find five, excuse me, three things you're grateful for every day. Mm-hmm. Then three things that you like or love about yourself. And again, they should be different every day. And then mm. three things that you're good at. And if you really strive to make them different every day, it starts to get harder and harder and harder. And you're pushing your mind in a much different direction, finding gratitude, finding what you love and like about yourself and finding what you're good at. And what happens is you start finding the better things in life. You have the expectation of gratitude. You have the expectation of loving and liking yourself. And you have the expectation of knowing that you're good at what you do. And once wow. that mindset changes, wow. what you can do is infinite. Very simple way to start your day. The other thing I would recommend and it'll really help you start changing how you talk to yourself, is every morning, right when you wake up, every night right before you go to bed, and by the way, those are the most important times of the day to do it, is to stand in front of the mirror, look at yourself, and say these 10 words 10 times. Thank you. I love you. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. Mm. They're very powerful. And what happens is many people, even though it's a very simple exercise, will feel odd, strange, different, have an emotional response to it. Just do it. Because most people are not used to speaking themselves in a kind, loving, caring way. Thank you. I love you. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. It's really very simple. Now, you mentioned that first thing in the morning and last thing at night are the most important times to do these exercises. Why is that? 
Ah, good question. As being creatures of routine, whether you know it or not, you have a bedtime routine and you have a wake-up routine. So in the evening, as you get closer to your bedtime, your mind is already starting to slow down. The cycles of your mind, and you're starting to drift into the light alpha state, which is the beginning of the dreaming and hypnotic state. So when you're in front of the mirror, right before you go to bed, you're in a much more suggestible state for you to say something that will stick. And in the morning, you're just waking up, and you're still in that alpha, half-asleep state, speaking to yourself, and your mind is much more open to suggestion. So those two times when you do the exercise, you have a better chance of making a much more lasting and powerful impression on your mind. Wow, that's incredible. Any other tips you have for our listeners, Scott, on their daily routines? Yes, do it every day. <laughs> Consistency. Got Consistency. It. Well, Scott, we need to wrap up the show, but before we go, can you tell our listeners where they can go to learn more about you and your services? Sure. They, if people want to get a hold of me, they can go to my website, which is www.ultimatevisionarymind.com. You can email me at scott at ultimatevisionarymind.com. Or you know what? If you want to call me, you can reach me at 847-331-5848. Well, Scott, thank you so much. It's been a pleasure speaking with you tonight. It's been incredibly informative, and I've, I've still got goosebumps. So, again, I want to acknowledge you for all the work you do to guide people to live their best lives and just thank you again for your time tonight. And Karen, I really appreciate you having me here tonight. Thank you. Absolutely. Have a great night, everybody. And until next week, dream big, start small and begin now. Have a great night. This has been get off the hot mess express with host Karen McGuire. Tune in each week and join the conversation about removing obstacles that are preventing you from finding and committing to lasting love on the next edition of Karen McGuire's Get Off the Hot Mess Express. You've been listening to the BBM Global Network. The ideas, views, and opinions of this broadcast are those of the participants of the program and are not necessarily the ideas, views, and opinions of the BBM Global Network Company.